All you seem to be doing is beating the HE double hockey sticks out of the machine and still having a lot of hand work to do. Better still, use a good sized excavator with a thumb. Oh, there you go. $900 or $90,000. Good trade off. That looks like that is rough on that little tractor. If you bust up your small tractor, the repairs will cost you the difference in money for a larger tractor with a backhoe. Give me a break. Looks like an okay attachment for a rugged skid steer. I would never put something like that on my tractor loader. These tractors are designed to pull farm implements and are not construction rated. Keep using like this and they won't last long. It's not an excavator. GP Outdoors had a unit like that as well. It looked like he was gonna tear his loader off the tractor. Okay. As a total novice that has zero experience, it looks like this is really hard on the tractor. I just purchased a BX23S and would have a hard time doing this with my new tractor. Not to mention, I'd have no idea how to use a tractor in this fashion. That front axle was sure getting a workout. In all the videos I have watched, including this one, it appears the tractor and mainly the loader are being abused. I use my equipment hard, but not to the point of abuse. Might this be better on a larger frame tractor? I sure wouldn't want to buy that tractor when you're done with it. Looks like a lot of work, doesn't look very good design, lots of jerking back and forth on the operator. Such a little tractor trying to remove stumps. Sad. Well, there you go, folks. Apparently, I was just abusing the heck out of my tractor in that last video. So let's have a conversation about what is use versus abuse. Because I feel like a lot of you guys want that shiny little tractor sitting in your shed, sitting in your garage, not getting dirty or dusty, or putting it to work at all. What's the point of having a machine? These things are designed to do work, to make your life easier. If what I was doing was abusing a tractor, then you guys have a lot to learn. Tractors were made to be used in all sorts of terrain, all sorts of conditions, year round. There's a reason these things have quick attach on the front end loader, the three point hitch to put a wide array of attachments out there and put them to work for whatever project you can dream up. Now this is the attachment that I was using right here, a stump bucket and most of the stump buckets that are on the market are a lot bigger than this guy right here. So this is designed to fit a small tractor because what I was doing with the stump bucket is not considered abuse. But what is abuse is when you have a huge lever that's out here, something that's double the length or triple the length. There's some of them that are three, three and a half foot long that guys are using on tiny tractors like this, on 1025Rs, Kubota BX and similar. And when you have that leverage point out here, kind of like a breaker bar that you would have to loosen up lug nuts on your car if you're changing the tire you have that lever point way out here so if you're pushing with the tractor and something gets tweaked that's when you're going to have problems damaging your loader arms bending things out of proportion we shortened everything up for a tractor that's this size a subcompact machine and smaller compact tractors to take that risk away we're about using tractors properly, efficiently, getting the most out of your machine, even if you have one of these little guys. I make tractors using all sorts of equipment, right? I've got the subcompact tractors, the larger compacts, utilities, I've got a skid steer, I've got an excavator, I've got all sorts of stuff. So a lot of you guys watch and have these smaller machines, you wanna see how these things work. But at the same time, nobody wants to see anybody babying things, right? These designs are made to get jobs done, the hard, nasty stuff that you don't wanna do by hand. So you gotta show it in the videos to see what you can do. Maybe see what not to do. Could I have been easier on it if I wanted to? Sure. But what's the fun in that? This thing is made to destroy things and that's what I wanted to do with it. So I'd encourage you to check out that video. See for yourself if you think that that's abuse that we were doing with the tractor. And for the record, we don't make sugar-coated videos where we just kind of cherry pick the good stuff. We show the good, the bad, whether something goes wrong on a, a piece of equipment, whether it's a tractor, an attachment, or something stupid that I do as well. I have no issue showing that to you guys. I want you to know that you can learn as you go, learn from mistakes too, and that you're not alone doing this. So I don't consider this to be tractor abuse but I do have a list of 10 ways to abuse your tractor that you should avoid. Let's get to it now. As always, we're sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. They are made in America, have a lifetime warranty. If your tractor feels tippy, side to side, especially if you have a cab on it, then adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Get more information on them at the link down below. Alrighty guys, so I jotted these down earlier. So the first one up is gonna be a lack of maintenance on your machine. That is flat out abuse, and that's not acceptable because that is gonna severely shorten the life of your tractor. We're talking about things like 
greasing, right? Every 10 hours on your loader, you should be greasing it. Checking the air filters on a regular basis, maybe not in the winter time, but all summer long, especially if you're in a dusty field like this. If you change your attachments a lot, you're probably gonna lose some hydraulic fluid, even if you don't see leaks anywhere around. So check your hydraulic fluid on a regular basis. If that system is low, that is very bad for your tractor. So it's not just your engine oil changes. Of course, that kind of thing needs to be done, but regular maintenance is key. We've done videos all about it. We've got some great maintenance partners where you can use code GWT to save big. So go to Lube Shuttle if you wanna get a really cool greasing system that's really easy to use, not frustrating like those old ones. If you own a John Deere, whether it's a zero turn, a tractor, a skid steer, whatever it is, 247parts.com, you can get all your maintenance supplies there. Next up, if you are using high range instead of low or medium when you are under load, so if you're using your front end loader with a big old pile of dirt in the bucket, if you're using uh, your three point hitch, say you have a box blade on there or a tiller or a brush hog, get yourself in low range or medium. It's a lot easier on the tractor. You could even stall the machine out if you're going up and down hills a lot. You're going to hear it really strain as well. It's just not good for the tractor, not good for the hydraulic system. And on that note, if your tractor is making that kind of moaning noise because you're really straining it, if those RPMs are starting to creep down, I had this happen to me a couple times last year when we were tilling where our driveway is currently at, and you can watch the RPM gauge really start to bog down. That's an indicator for you to slow down, okay? Take it easier on the machine, on the equipment. Everything's got to work properly at a certain rated speed. That means both the tiller and the tractor itself. So if you're doing that on a regular basis over and over again, you're really going to start to cause potentially premature wear and other problems. Be careful backing up with your three-point hitch, all right? And so a common example of this is if you have a box blade on there. And a box blade is designed to both push and pull. However, if you are pushing, going backwards with it, you need to be careful because this whole mechanism here is tied into the kind of the transaxle in the frame of your tractor back in that area there. And I've seen reports, not all that common online, but if you are just flying backwards and you hit a stump, something that's underneath the surface that you can't see or um, a big boulder, something else down there, in those types of scenarios, I've seen reports of major structural damage, frame damage, that kind of thing to their tractors that are very expensive repairs. The key is to go slow, Pay attention to what you're doing. If you're under control, oftentimes those kinds of scenarios can be avoided. So if you take a look right here, this is gonna be the rod that is part of your curl roll. So if you have a bucket on here, just a regular bucket full of dirt, and you wanna dump it out, this is how you would dump it out, okay? It is made to just release material. However, if you are pushing and pulling with the stump bucket in this kind of a scenario, Boy, you're really looking to cause problems on your tractor. Same thing can be said with the snow pusher. I love the back drag feature that's on the snow pusher. One of the differences with the snow pusher is that you are oftentimes, pretty much all the time, on a smooth, level, clean, easy surface, right? And you're just gonna kind of scrape along with that and you're not gonna be extended this far either. You don't need to go that far. But if you are driving, forward or backwards and just digging in the ground like against a stump with this stump bucket right down here, I'm telling you, you're gonna have problems. You see backhoe cylinders with the same kind of an issue. These will get bent and torqued, so pay attention to what you're doing. You'll never see me with my stump bucket uh, in this kind of a position trying to dig down into the ground. It will be at least partially retracted back up in there to give it more strength. You really don't need to be in this overextended position or even vertical down to the ground. I want to be somewhere with the forward facing angle down here with plenty of rod back in the cylinder. Another common thing to see people do is really ramming or trying to yank something with a three point hitch. And those kinds of actions are going to be dangerous because something sudden and unexpected could occur. We showed that actually last summer happening. And fortunately we had our 511 grill guard on here, but we dented it in right here, but we saved our grill the stump bucket missed. <laughs> and we drove the tractor all the way forward. The operator did, it wasn't me, but hit the stump right here, caused some damage, but everything was okay because this protected us here. Again, this is a, a discount club member. We have a whole discount club. It's completely free to you guys, but it's just a section on our website of participating vendors where you can use code GWT to save at least 5% off of your order. 511 has tons of different grill guards out there for the John Deere's and Kubotas. They're looking to expand all the time and offer new products, so make sure you check them out. Another popular comment that I see is, well, I'll just use a set of pallet forks to pop things out or move things around. And the problem with that is number one, they're gonna be 36, 42, 48 inches long. So they're getting that, that lever point way out here that can put a lot more load on the tractor. 
The second problem with that is they're often off-center. They're not going to be a centered load like a stump bucket, for example, is completely centered. It's stable. The load is always going to be right here in the middle. But on a pallet fork, if you have a tine that's over here on the side and that's the part you're digging down with, well, that load is off-center. And so you can put a disproportional amount of, of force on each side of the loader arm here and tweak it, twist it, that kind of thing. You want to avoid doing that. That's not a problem you can easily fix. Now one that I have been guilty of on occasion and I try to be aware of it but sometimes you're in a rush is not having enough time to allow the machine to either warm up, especially when it's cold out, or cool down, right? And somebody in a video a while back made a really good analogy. I think they said they were explaining it to their kids. Something about if you ran a race, would you start the race without warming up first, stretching out, being prepared, and right when you were done, they always say to cool down, right? To walk it out, to kind of stretch, loosen up, rehydrate, whatever it is. But you don't just immediately wake up and exert yourself, wear yourself out, and then call it a day, right? There's preparation, there's cool down to that kind of a thing. The same thing can be said with your machine. When it's cold outside, you want to make sure you can let that hydraulic system warm up a little bit. Let the fluid run through, let the engine block warm up and the oil and everything else before you start to put it to work. In the summertime, we learned this last summer as well, that if you are starting to overheat, it can be better to turn your tractor down to idle instead of just shutting it off idle still allows that cooling system to operate and let that engine temperature recover and get back to where it needs to be something else that you may see happen and it's kind of a gray area is the use of four-wheel drive all the time and out here on the property where we have no solid dry paved surfaces I'm pretty much always in four-wheel drive on all of my machines, but if you are working on an area that is pretty much always dry paved concrete whatever it is you're probably gonna put a lot of premature wear on your front drive line. That's gonna cause issues with not only just the tires, but the hubs, the entire system that's up here. And in fact, I had a John Deere 4105 a few years back that literally in my parking lot, the whole front drive system completely disintegrated and fell apart onto the ground in the parking lot. I'll have to see if I can find pictures of it. I had them somewhere, but the whole thing had to be rebuilt. And the technicians basically said, this has been ran and pretty much abused in four-wheel drive for its whole life. You can see the bad wear that was on the front tires too. So be aware, you wanna use four-wheel drive whenever you have to. If you're out here and you're in four-wheel drive all the time, great, you have to be in four-wheel drive. But if you are on paved drive surfaces, pop it back into two-wheel drive, pop it back into four when you need it. And this last one, again, I think kind of goes both ways. You know, there's a certain mindset out there. I feel like some of the old school guys are the mentality of buy it, and then work it to death and get rid of it, right? But if you are looking at a machine, looking at buying a machine and it is all dented up, maybe stuff's been dropped on the hood, the panels are dented in, busted, light covers are busted, hydraulic lines are bent, the seat's all ripped up, you know, that's a sign that that machine has likely not been well taken care of. Anybody can have a one-time accident, even two or three accidents, right, where something does get dented, something falls on your hood, all it takes is one rock rocking back onto your hood and there's a dent or a hole or whatever else it is, I get that, but if the whole tractor is kind of beat up and ugly looking and mangled, well, that's a tractor that I certainly wouldn't buy. Now, all that said, you know, these tractors typically come with some built-in maybe engineered in safety features on them, you know. Number one will be the pump size, which is limiting lift capacities on the three-point hitch, on the front end loader. They're designed, they're built all around as a complete package to do a certain amount of work, right? And not more than that. So you see some guys adding turbos onto their tractors that are not designed for it. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I'd say just go get a bigger tractor. Each size of a tractor is meant to work with certain types of attachments. And if you go beyond that scope, I think you can start to get into trouble. But even things such as tire slippage, right? These tractors are going to oftentimes slip as you go and not allow you to really force and ram things any harder than you could. So that's a built-in safety feature. You have pressure reliefs. You have overheat sensors as well, like we found out on our 1025 hour last summer with the tiller. It just got too hot, shut the PTO off and let the thing recover. Anyway, I think our videos show that we work our tractors hard, but we don't abuse them, right? We wanna push the limits right near that line to see what they can do, show you what they're capable of, but I'm not endorsing abusing your tractor in any way. But just because it looks like it's a hard job for a human to do it does not mean it's a hard job for a tractor. If you have anything to add that are signs of abuse, things that we should look for, make sure you let us know and leave a comment down below. Now we've decked this tractor out pretty good and we do sell and ship tractor attachments all over the country. If you're in the market for something for your front end loader, for your three point hitch, or even an accessory, we're happy to help check out goodworkstractors.com. And if you do enjoy tractor videos, Videos, we'd love to have you tag along hit that subscribe button right down below I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time stay safe we'll see you soon yeah.